when I finish drinking a beer, I'm trying to rinse it out right away. I'm going to place it on the drying rack, back to beer. I now have two six packs rinsed out and clean. Now it's time to put them in the star sand to get rid of the labels. Now, this is not beer, but I was cleaning a label off a Jack Daniels bottle. Or I think, no, it wasn't Jack. Well, anyway, whatever it was. I was just delabeling that one. So now what I do is empty the OxyClean. I'm trying to get some clear bottles so that if I do a beer, a nice clear ale or an IPA, I want to show off my ability to make a clear beer. So I have a couple of clear bottles, mostly these amber Sierra Nevada. Now, while the star sand is dripping off the little bottles, I'll begin the next batch. Now, as I said, I can get 12 bottles in here. Last bottle. Okay, 12 bottles in, in about 12 days, the labels will come off. See, there's no rush if you do a little every time, everything works out smooth. Actually, I need to get a six pack for this. Okay, as soon as you get your bottles, out of the OxyClean, you want to rinse them out. If you wait until they dry, you get that dry white powder inside. And the only way to get rid of that is to soak them again. This way there's no scrubbing. You rinse your bottle out as soon as you pour it into your glass. And put it on the rack and eventually into the storage room into the green room until you're ready to bottle or until you're ready to remove the labels and I found it takes about 12 days and that time all the bottles have been soaking for 12 days the labels come off Okay, those will drip dry and eventually it'll go back into the six pack carriers and taken outside for storage. Okay, once the bottles have drip dried, go back in the containers and we take them outside for storage. And the reason I drip dry them is I want to make sure while they're stored away there's no dampness inside which may start getting some kind of fungus or something growing in them. My clean bottles are stored out here in this container which pretty much keeps the dust out each one holds about a case and a half I use the dishwasher to help when I bottle sanitize it and I'll be stacking the bottles to be filled there
right now I have them soaking in star sand. So I'll just be moving them over. Before sanitizing, I look through each bottle, make sure there's nothing in it. Okay, there's my 18 bottles, three six packs ready to go. Okay, so we got about a cup of water going into the microwave for like two minutes to boil it. And while that's going on, we'll measure out the sugar. Point 0.7. Or 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 1.35. Okay, the water's boiled. Pour in the sugar. Mix it up. Okay, next step is sanitizing the bottling bucket. Again, since I do two gallon batches, I just use another uh, two gallon bucket from Home Depot. Somewhere in here is my valve. There we go. It's been soaking in star sand. So this is ready to get put together. So here's the racking cane. It's got to go into star sand. Oh, this has to go in. Get a good soak. sand into the bottling bucket. Trying not to destroy the kitchen and my wife kill me. Getting some of her orchids out of the way. Now we'll run some of the star sand through the valve. Shut that down. around one more time. I've already taken a sample and got my reading, but can you see, I hope you can see how clear this is. This has not been cold crashed. No gelatin was used. It's just time. It's been fermenting since uh, Christmas Eve. Wait till I get a good flow going. And I'll pour my sugar in. As we start to get low, I just tip the bucket so I can keep the, the wrecking cane into the liquid and above the trub. With this clear beer as we wound up, I certainly don't want to get very much trub into the, into the bottles. One thing I've learned from past experience is wash out your racking cane as soon as you're done with it. So first thing I do is I just run some water through it. And I'll put a drop of soap in there, get that beaded up, and run the soapy water through. One time I didn't do this and I, I let the stuff 
dry inside of the tubing, inside the plastic tube, and after that, there was no way to clean it. So now, as soon as I'm finished racking, I clean up the cane. Okay, that's enough of the soapy water. Now we'll just run some clean water through it. And that's it for that. Okay, now we're just about ready to bottle. So we'll move this so it sits up above the dishwasher. And we're ready to go. Okay, once the labels are printed, you have to do if you use a dot matrix printer, is you gotta cover them with a clear acrylic. Otherwise, when the labels get damp, the colors start to roll. So I'll give them one coat here. Let it dry for about an hour and give it another coat. Okay, it's been a couple hours since I sprayed the shellac or the lacquer on my bottle, so now it's time to label. Pretty easy process. Okay, here's the three six packs, 18 bottles, and here's that three quarter bottle. We'll get a pin and we'll add three quarters to this. Just so we don't give it away to somebody by mistake. Another thing I do with my labels is I put one in the beer book. So I keep track of every beer I've brewed since I've been making labels. This is going back a couple of years. You can see I've done a lot of beers. I write some tasting notes if I remember to do it. But I've done a lot. Another thing I do, another thing I do is put a label on my calendar. So this will be ready to drink in February. So this goes on to my February calendar. I can keep checking the calendar. It's easier than going outside and looking in the refrigerator. Check. And the last step 
is putting the beer in six packs to carry it out. Because the beers are in the six pack carriers, I can't see the label there on the beer. So therefore I put a label on each, each six pack. You notice I use Sierra Nevada bottles. I'm pretty standardized. 